Yes. Am I doing? We are forthelandlords.com. We help landlords get more money, reduce their hassle, and get their time back. And today we are going to be stacking, working through the numbers of a house in multiple occupation. Last week we did one uh, on a single let. It was very well received. We had lots of positive comments. It's a really simple video really, but we're just gonna go through what we pay for a house in multiple occupation, the purchase price of the property. Conversion. Conversion, always, yeah, always conversion. We're not buying um, ready metal. Right, but Occasionally, this one, is, this yeah. one isn't, yeah. Um, then we're gonna convert it, you know, put in the bedrooms, bathrooms, big kitchen, make yeah, it all nice. Packages. Uh, then we're going to refinance it in this example and also rent it out as well. So you'll see the whole thing. Yeah, how much you spend on it, including our fees, what it makes you. This is, this must make a grand, over a grand. Yeah. yeah. So we pick, well, obviously they're all different. You know, they're different purchase prices, they're different costs to renovate, but they're within, within a band. If we pick one that's somewhere in the middle, they're all going to be slightly different. What did we pay for this one, Adam? 140,000 pounds. In South Yorkshire. So just to let you know, a house in multiple occupation, in case you don't know, is a relatively large, probably three or four bedroom house where probably with a large, well not probably, definitely with a large-ish reception area, and we convert the reception areas into bedrooms, and you end up with a five, four, five, or six bedroom, nicely put together, we only do nice ones, we don't do slum ones, um, usually almost all en suites, if not maybe two sharers, and so they're done to a nice spec, and we know that that gets the right rent, and you rent out room by room by room. So instead of take, taking, I don't know, seven, eight, nine hundred pounds per month, um, rent for the whole house, you rent it out room by room, and it's probably 500, 550, even 600 pounds per room per month. Now, the landlord does pay all the bills, so council tax, heat, light, power, television license, those kind of things, the landlord pays that. So, purchase price, 140,000 pounds. It's gotta be a big old house. Yep. Close to... What's this one? SD is? Stamp, Stamp duty. duty. So, 4,200 pounds. Yep. We spent £73,000 on this house. It's a lot. There's a lot of money going for that. Mm. It actually doesn't add any value. Does Absolutely, it? yeah. So um, you've got to be aware of that. And that includes the furniture packages. Mm -hmm. It includes a high-spec finish and a more expensive kitchen mm -hmm. than normal. Um, Go on, let's run through lots, it. There's, a, yeah, there's, a lot. there's lots of bits and bobs. Uh, beds, bedside tables, mm. wardrobes, TVs, yeah. fridge, freezer, dishwasher, cutlery, cutlery iron. Yeah, did you say artwork? Artwork yeah. on the walls, little yeah. sofa to sit down on. You know, yeah. there's a lot of money in there. Interesting, there's 5% VAT on that. So, because it's, it's an HMO, it? there's a special form we can teach you how to fill that in if you're interested we'll in working out that. We also get in touch with the HMO office before we start the renovation, yep. so they're all effectively sure. verbally signing it off before we even start any work. A mm -hmm. lot more licensing on that. Yep. Uh, legal's pretty much the same as any any uh, property, and then you put there RP. We charge a fee. We're a property sourcer. We are the UK's number one property sourcer. We have done. Oh, we should have started with this. We've done something like is it 350 odd HMO rooms, something like that. So. Um, yeah, that's, uh, uh, yeah. With a, we've done 1,200 properties, of which 350 or so um, HMOs. Now, we know what we're doing. Um, we charge a fee. We can do this for you. If you want us to find a house, source a house, renovate it, and rent it out, we only do properties in the areas where we rent out. So obviously, there's got to be properties that we, HMOs, that we want to, uh, to rent out. Be in touch. There'll be a link somewhere, I'm sure. Um, that's not what this video is about. End value. Now, this is an interesting one. Always an uh, interesting one. If you're buying a single let, is that bricks and mortar? Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, I can see it. Um, so, people, people, you uh, are thinking commercial valuation quite often. Um, hey, how do you value an HMO? And the honest answer is different surveyors come at it from different angles, and different lenders ask them to come at it from different angles. We work on bricks and mortar. So, what's this house worth as a house? Uh, Adam said, you know, you're spending seventy-three thousand pounds on a house, and maybe you're not adding value to it. Now that is true in 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 the, in the, in the absolute sense. You know, if you put um, beds, bathroom, extra bath, you know, an ensuite in a place where you don't really need an ensuite in that house. If you put um, uh, fire boarded ceilings and a fire panel, no homeowner is going to thank you and pay you for that. Um, those, so therefore, on the bricks and mortar valuation, it's not really reflected that a guy goes in there, survey goes in there and says, okay, it's worth this. Now, that's still pretty sporty. You know, we have got an uplift, so it's not like you've lost the whole thing. Adam just keeps going down to check the, uh, the, the, the figures <laughs> down there. Um, so what's, he, what's he doing we're down there? We, we, we're not that slick. We're not that slick. We've got, we've got a, a comfort monitor down here. Um, however, and we will always have this conversation with any client that we're going through, we know 
that once this is all put together, if you were to, and this is why we don't buy these kind of houses very often, if you were to buy this kind of HMO, you'd be paying more than 240,000 pounds. We know that in this area, an HMO, as an HMO, a going concern, will go for anywhere between 280 and 320,000 pounds. Well, that's what they're asking for at the moment. They tend to ask in 320. I've not seen many go for 320. But there's an, if you wanted to buy an, an HMO, do it up, keep it for a couple of years and flip it on as an HMO, there's more in it than that. But it's a bit of a, it's a very niche market. So we always look at the bricks and mortar and that's the ones that we've put down. So uh, here's another thing about commercial valuation. Commercial valuation, you might get a high commercial valuation, great, but your loan to value will usually be lower and therefore your loan's about the same and your pay rate can be significantly higher. You might wish you hadn't got a commercial valuation. Anyway, what Adam's doing through here is so, so we bought the house, we've renovated it and its end value is £240,000 bricks and mortar. Like I say, you probably sell it for close to 300 as an HMO. Remortgage. So if you mortgage that at uh, 75% loan to value, 4.5% payable, uh, which is about right. People say, oh, there's a lot more than that, loads, loads more. No, it's not, it might, be, it might be five or 5.1. I got 5.1 the other day. Uh, if you bought an HMO today, this is an HMO that we're doing the numbers on a house that is legally completed, like we live, the builders are in here now, legally completed only last week, and we're stacking it at 4.5 because pretty confident that's where pay rates will be in <coughs> about six months' time when this is going to yeah. be refinanced. So go on, what, what are the numbers you've got on there? Yeah, we'll get, I'll do my clicky thing again. Clicky. We'll get Lauren to put the spreadsheet on the screen now. So does it just stay? Is it at the top we'll of our faces now? Yeah, we'll go there. Like, so, so there's a spreadsheet on top, and then yeah. we're going to walk, walk through it as well. Go on, go on, Lauren, stick that spreadsheet on the video. Thank you. Run through the numbers. Rent coming in. Mm, Two thousand and eighty-three pounds a month. <laughs> yep. Yep. Management twelve percent plus VAT for HMO fully managed. Mm -hmm. Two hundred ninety-nine. Your running costs, so your council tax, your um, your gas, your electric, your broadband. You know. Your there's bill. a there's a buffer in there as well. So Adam's put six hundred and fifty pounds for your running costs. You won't spend that every month, but you might have. So this is slightly more maintenance in heavy. We have a timo yeah. stat there in the house that um, helps control and regulate the the heating usage, mm. and you know that's what we have a fair usage policy for electrics. Yeah. PIR sensors in the um, yeah the communal, communal areas, areas, LEDs everywhere. And stuff like that, yeah. we, we try and make it as as, as energy efficient as possible, but then <coughs> you know what energy bills they're coming down. Did you down, mention that down. all the bedrooms will go for en suite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Running cost six fifty, and yeah. then total income one thousand one thousand one hundred thirty three. So there's an easy way to take a <coughs> hundred and two hundred and odd thousand pounds. Let's say anywhere between two hundred and two hundred fifty thousand pounds. That's what the typical HMO is going to cost, and make about a thousand pounds, twelve hundred pounds a month uh, in profit if you've refinanced it. So actually, go on. What's the capital? Are you going to? Oh, you done? Oh, look at that. You've done it already. Oh. Go on, what's the capital employed, so Adam? You're going to leave some, some money way. in a HMO. Yeah. Now, some people will tell you, get a commercial valuation, get a monster loan, get all your money back out. You'll most likely, if you even can get one of those, which you might be able to, but you'll have a higher um, interest rate, mm -hmm. a lower loan to value most likely. Um, so you'll find you actually won't cash for as much each month. Mm. Higher loan to but, value. So but, yeah. we always look at leaving a chunkier amount in on the bricks and mortar basis. Mm -hmm. um, that's an amazing number. You just, just yeah. look at you're that getting number. But you're getting 25% return. Yeah. Go and put 50 odd grand somewhere mm. and get And get 25% return. That, that, is, that, is a, that is why we do this. Do you want to put a, hang on a minute. Wow. The wow circle. Yeah, it's the wow circle. Mm. It's, uh, it's, it's buying this, doing this work. Don't forget that, that's not you doing the work because we're, we're doing that. We, we, our fee is in there. We're doing it all for you. You've got some great equity, so you're not at risk. You've got something you can sleep easy at night. When Adam's saying leave a chunky bit in, that's your choice. But I know I do, that's what I do. It's like, there's a nice and safe and steady. I've got a thousand pounds a month coming in profit. Uh, I've got some equity in there. My actual um, uh, return on capital employed, that's what that is, return on capital employed, is in my twen high 20s, sometimes slightly mm. more than that, but I won't promise that on a video. Uh, it's down to you know, what Drug you get. During the time as well, there's always, um, almost always comparables um, of houses like that that people do and then sell, ready-made. Yeah. Um, and people buy them for much more than mm. 240K. 
That's, that's the, that's so we, we will find, if mm. we're property sources, we will find a house and convert it. We will also find an HMO and buy it ready-made, and sometimes we do. But what we find in, what, nine out of 10? It's probably more like 19 out of 20 cases is when you look at an HMO that's already there, it's gonna cost, to get it compliant and looking yeah. good, there's a reason it's for sale. You know, It's gonna cost half of that, if not more, and they're gonna be asking 275,000 pounds for it. You might as well build the thing from scratch. So that's what we do. Um, all right, next steps. Uh, there's a link in the video. Click on it and it'll do one of two things depending on when you're watching it. If you're watching this now, this Friday, we've got a webinar. It's a workshop and we're gonna show you step-by-step step how to find it, fix it, rent it. There's gonna be- HMO. HMO. HMO workshop. Yeah, there's gonna be um, the check sheets you need, the guide, the schedule of works, the snagging sheet. There's going to be a load of giveaways at the end of it and all the way through the workshop so you'll get to see it. You will be able to put together, there's a three-step video guide. So you go, right, here we are. We're walking through a, a video of a house that we're about to buy, uh, sorry, renovate, a house that we've already renovated and a, and a sit-down in, in the office going through all the spreadsheets and whatnot. So it will be very comprehensive. Um, that's the webinar. Click on it, join us. Or if the webinar's passed, you can click on it and it'll go to a replay of the same webinar. The result of either of those is at the end of it, if you want to talk more about HMOs with this man here, he is the UK's number one property sourcer. Uh, and if you want us to source an HMO for you, we can do that. And uh, yeah, whether you watch the live webinar or the recorded one, at the end there's a book a call with Adam button and you can place your order. There we go. Done it. That's an HMO stacking. Bye for now.